My name is Joey Lovestrand, and this is a presentation on mannered demonstratives in Bahrain, a Chadic language originally given at the DIU conference for uh, students and alumni. A brief outline, I'll first introduce the Bahrain language, then I'll talk about Bahrain mannered demonstratives and their primary function, and then talk about the extended uses of mannered demonstratives. Bahrain is a Chadic language spoken by about 6,000 people in the Gera region in the middle of the Republic of Chad. The Chadic languages are part of the Afroasic family. So here you see the uh, blue being the Semitic, red the Berber, the Cushitic and orange, and the black languages, the black area on the map are where the Chadic languages are spoken, divided basically into three groups, Western, Central, and East Chadic. And that's where the Bahrain language is spoken. Zooming in on a map of Chad, I can see that there are many languages spoken in Chad, over 100. The Bahrain language is, is there marked with the red arrow. Uh, there are two subgroups of East Chadic languages. First, these red languages called the A group or the Shari Logon languages of the Chadic family. And then Bahrain is in the B group or the Gera group of Chadic languages. Previous research on Bahrain first started with orthography design, um, and then there was an MIMA thesis, which went through the basic structure of the language, a PhD thesis, and other articles focusing on various aspects of the languages. But what's relevant for today is that I also received an ELDP small grant a few years ago to do some video documentation of the Bahrain language. And in that video, in that project, we compiled 17 hours of video documentation and over two of those hours have now been transcribed and uh, annotated, glossed word by word in flex. Most of the videos are monologues. The recordings are all available on the ELAR archive online. And this is an example of uh, how I used flex to search for examples of a particular word. I was interested in using the concordance feature to find where it occurred in the corpus. And now to introducing manner demonstratives in Bahrain. Looking through the data of the 48 transcribed texts, which have been interlinearized in flex, making up about 28,000 words, looking for this word tei, which uh, can be glossed as like this or thus. And it has the function of a manner demonstrative plus perhaps other additional functions. This particular presentation is a first look at the functions of this word. So it's not a comprehensive study, nor is it uh, quantitative. That is, I haven't counted how many times I think uh, the word has each function. But rather, this is a more qualitative description of what seem to be the most salient functions of this word, tei. The basis of the analysis is this recent paper by Nicotina and Dreis that just came out in a Language Science Press book this year. Uh, their article, The Use of Manner Demonstratives in Discourse, looks at two other African languages from different language families, one being Wan from the Mande family, spoken in Cote d'Ivoire, and the other Kambata from the Cushitic family, spoken in Ethiopia. Nicotina and Trice compare the functions of manner demonstratives in these two languages, and they come up with a list of core functions and extended functions. The core uses of manner demonstratives in these two languages are uh, first to um, mark contextually salient manner and represent represented speech. So contextually salient manner would include uh, a deictic reference to a manner that something be is being done in the real world or a manner of doing something that was uh, described previously in the discourse. It also refers to gesture, so there's a multimodal aspect to these words where the manner that's being referred to by the manner demonstrative can be indicated with a gesture. And they also mark as a core function the use of manner demonstratives to refer to represented speech. Uh, so where the manner demonstrative refers to uh, a quote of some kind. Then they say that there's also in the core functions a just so implicature that arises when the manner demonstrative is used without any clear manner being uh, present in representative speech or in the discourse or in gesture. And when you use the manner without any clear explanation for what the manner is, they say that an implicature arises 
meaning that no, and the interpretation is that there's no extraordinary circumstances worth uh, mentioning. In other words, the action was done just so in the plainest and uh, least noteworthy way possible. Here's some examples from Bahrain of some of these uh, functions that Nicotina and Trice identified. Uh, in this example, Atye is explaining how he makes a particular kind of farming tool. And as he uh, is speaking about making the tool, he also has the tool in his hand and is demonstrating what he does. And so when he attaches the uh, metal part of this tool, the shovel part, the heavy part, to the wooden neck of the tool, in order to make sure that they're attached, he hits it on the ground. And so as he says, I hit the neck of the tool, I hit it like this, he also demonstrates hitting the tool on the ground. So here's a video. So this is another example of using T as a modern demonstrative to refer to manner, but in this case, a manner that's obvious in the world of the story. So the one animal says to the other, your head there, what is beautiful like this? And so the manner that they're referring to is the manner in which the animal's head is beautiful. And that becomes a little bit clearer in the next sentence when they also ask, who braided your hair? And so the te there is referring to the specific manner in which the hair was braided that makes the head look beautiful. We also get the te functioning as a manner demonstrative to refer to a manner that comes up in discourse. In this case, uh, it's a cataphoric reference to a manner that's going to be explained in the following sentence. So in this context, Usman is uh, explaining how the days of giving talks for recordings are going to go. Uh, he first says, uh, it begins like this, using T as a manner demonstrative. After he says it begins like this, he explains the manner in which the recordings are going to begin. He says, I will begin with a little bit of recording and then uh, next we will give the place to this other person and that's the manner in which this recording is going to begin. So we clearly have uh, deictic uses of te as a manner demonstrative referring to manner in the real world or discourse context. Now we're going to look at uh, te being used uh, with a gesture that indicates the manner. In this example, Ramat is giving a story about hunting squirrels and he explains uh, in this case how a squirrel uh, is close and he's trying to get it with his spear. So he says uh, he has his spear and he stabs it like this. And as he says the word te like this, he also very clearly indicates with his arm a stabbing motion. That's clear in this video. Drop garo. One kalas arka yude nta vigade na drop garo drop garo. In the same story, we also see an exa another example of Ramat using te as a manner demonstrative along with a gesture, and in this case, he repeats the word five times as he also repeats the gesture. So this word te in Bahrain has two of these core functions that Nicotina and Trice identify as core functions of manner demonstratives, the deictic function and the use with uh, gestures. The third uh, function that they represent, reference to represented speech, does not occur in Bahrain, at least not in a very systematic way. And the reason for this is that there's another demonstrative that's used in this function, the ad nominal demonstrative, gi, which is actually a third person singular ad nominal demonstrative, has a secondary function to uh, indicate that there's represented speech coming on. And so in the case where you said, uh, he said like this, and then give the reported speech, it wouldn't be te that's used, but the ad nominal demonstrative gi. So this is a function of a manner demonstrative that Nicotina and Trice found that does not seem to be used, at least not as a primary use of te in Bahrain. 
the case of the just so implicature is a bit more difficult to identify, especially working with just corpus. There's one example where uh, you do seem to have this kind of implicature arising. Uh, so in this example, uh, the story is explaining a particular uh, ritual. Part of the ritual is eating uh, a local food, which is a type of bread normally eaten with a sauce. And it's given to people, to these children who have to eat it without sauce. Uh, and so the speaker says, they eat it just like this. And there it's already should be clear that um, like this means on its own, you eat it in the plain way. But the difficulty is that this is also explained in the next sentence without sauce. And so it's not clear whether te here is a just so implicature that's later reinforced by the following sentence without sauce, or whether it's having a dictic cataphoric function to eat it like this without sauce, then the next sentence explaining the manner in which the, the bull, the food needs to be eaten. So it's not really clear whether Barain uses te with this just so implicature that Nefetina and Trice identified for Juan and Kambata. But we do see significant overlap in the functions of te and the functions of minor demonstratives in other languages. Nefetina and Trice also discuss extended uses of minor demonstratives. And here's where the uses of uh, the minor demonstratives differ from each of these two languages. And the claim that Nicotina and Trice make, or the hypothesis that they put forward, is that the reason why there are different extended uses relates to the different uh, grammatical category of the manner of demonstratives in the different words. In Kambata, the manner of demonstrative has more of an adverbial function in the syntax, and in Juan, the adverbial, the manner of demonstrative is not an adverb, it's a sentence final particle. And because of these different syntactic distributions, different extended uses uh, arise of each of these words. We can first uh, look at this uh, use of the manner demonstrative as an affirmative uh, in order to state that something is so, and that comes up in Kambata. We also see an example of that potentially happening in Bahrain in this conversation about harvest time and rains. Uh, in this particular sentence, they're comparing life in the village with life in the town. And one speaker says, it's not the same, it's not the same. And the other speaker agrees, De ati, it's true. Like this, it is so. Uh, so potentially this is te being used to agree, although we'd have to look more closely at what the function of the word ati is in this sentence as well to be clear. But here's a video of this exchange. So there's potentially a use of the uh, affirmative function of manner demonstratives in Bahrain, but it's not totally clear. Trice also identifies a coordinate-like function of manner demonstratives in Kambata so that uh, in a list of giving words of similar places, the uh, adverbial manner demonstrative can be used to link different nouns. That doesn't really happen in Bahrain, but there is a similar function that can happen. And in Bahrain, we can see uh, this word te not being used to coordinate words, but being used to sort of generalize uh, a list of words to other similar items without giving another specific item in the list. So in this example, uh, it's used with numbers. Uh, so Sumain is telling a story about when his father and his uncle had to go look for food during a famine, and that they went and they found rice. And when explaining how much rice they found, said they found uh, about two or three bowls of rice. Um, now, here it just literally says, koro bowl, two, three, te, like this. So he lists as two or three, and then it says te, or something like that, something in the realm of that number. And so, well, there is sort of a similar function in this likewise meaning. Um, the semantics are similar, but syntactically, the manner demonstrative is not being used to coordinate nouns in Bahrain. 
There's another um, function that uh, is listed for Kambata that it's also grammaticalized along with the word for become into a contrastive coordinating uh, particle of some sort, and that does not appear to be the case in Bahrain. Juan has a different set of extended uses, um, which are said to relate to the fact that it's a sentence final particle. And so in Bahrain, we don't find any of those uses or extended uses of the manner of demonstrative, which goes along with nicotine antrisis hypothesis that these are uses that would only arise if the manner of demonstrative were a sentence final particle. Pate does have other potential extended uses that weren't identified in Kambata or Juan. Uh, the one I already mentioned was the likewise or the or so use of the manner demonstrative. There's also a much more general use of the manner demonstrative in a discourse context to summarize uh, something more or less what's been said in the rest of the preceding uh, discourse, the last few sentences. So in this example, uh, again, Sumayin and Abakar are talking about the harvest and the rain, and they're discussing some of the problems that are coming up, including uh, the problem of the birds that might come for the harvest. Then to move on in the conversation, uh, Sumayin says, and so when will you harvest? And so the be sentence begins with the coordinator and then the manner of demonstrative day. And like this, when will you harvest? Though there, the manner demonstrative doesn't seem to refer to any particular manner of something being done. It seems to refer to the whole setting, the whole context, everything, the summary of what's been said in the preceding discourse. There's another example of a more general use of the manner demonstrative day. In this context, Arabi is talking about the impact of deforestation policy on farming practices. And he's been encouraging people to follow the rules and to trust that the government will treat them well. And then um, as a concluding statement for this part of the discourse says, uh, if it is like this, day, the government won't reject you. And the like this in this context isn't referring to a specific manner of something being done, but the general uh, truth that, or the general idea that if you follow the rules, the government will treat you well. And if you do this, if you behave in the right way, you won't be rejected. Another apparent extended use of manner demonstratives in Bahrain is to uh, refer to a specific non-definite noun phrase. And so in this context, Harun is talking about how parties used to be organized between villages and says that those from Balili, the people from Balili, will send out a message saying that uh, we should come to their party and that they'll specify that it's on such and such a day. And so in this context, he's saying that there is a party that's happening on a specific day, but since he's telling a general story about how things used to be done, he's not actually giving a definite day. So this is a specific but non-definite phrase. So we see the word for day followed by a relative, the head of a relative clause, and the relative clause only has the, the manner demonstrative te day so day which is like this and the interpretation that it's on such and such a day or tel jour as it was given in the original French translation so to conclude we can do a comparison of the semantic mapping that Nicotina and Joyce did uh, with what I found so far for the manner demonstrative in Bahrain and just to make it a bit clearer uh, what goes with which language these blue, this blue line represents what was found for Juan. The three core functions of contextually salient manner represented speech and the just so implicature, the aspect, the absence of expected additional circumstances along with two extended uses. The yellow represents Kambata, the, again, the three core functions and the four extended uses. In order to talk about Bahrain, we would have to add a few other extended uses like the likewise function, which was semantically similar to the coordinator function, but syntactically different, and the independent uh, specific MP function, as well as the more general uh, referring to the context function. And we can show the map for uh, Bahrain in this way with a red dotted line. It includes two of the three, potentially two of the three uh, core functions. 
one of the extended functions of Kambata and three other extended functions that weren't identified for either language. And to further uh, complete this map, we can add on the fact that the adnominal demonstrative in Bahrain is uh, a form that uh, has that function of represented speech, the function that's filled by manner demonstratives in Juan and Kambata. So in conclusion, the Bahrain data at least partially supports Nicotina and Trice's proposal that adverbial manner demonstratives extend to affirmative and likewise meanings, uh, although not necessarily as coordination, where um, manner demonstratives that aren't sentence final particles aren't going to have any of the meanings that uh, Juan showed as extended uses of manner demonstratives. However, it suggests that the represented speech function is not a core function of manner demonstratives, as it's not a function that the manner demonstrative is used for in Bahrain. And it also illustrates some other extended uses of manner demonstratives, like the general context use and the specific indefinite use that weren't identified in Juan and Kambata. There's plenty of further research that can be done in this area, of course, refining the semantic and pragmatic analysis and definitions, of course, uh, quantitative distribution of how these are used in the corpus, looking more closely at the syntactic distribution of uh, manner demonstratives, uh, comparing some of the differences between anaphoric and cataphoric uses. Uh, potentially, there should be some prosody looked at here to see if there's any correlations with different functions. Uh, the use in dialogue versus monologue is, of course, a major gap in the research so far. Much more uh, recordings of dialogues would be needed to get a fuller picture of how the manner demonstrative functions. And there's also other words that uh, relate to these kinds of meanings too, including a preposition, tia, meaning like, and ati, sentence final particle, that seems to be some kind of affirmative as well. well thank you for listening to this presentation.